You read the headline right, rumor has it that Apple might be ready to release a wireless charging pad. Air power, come back! Plus, a new patent shows the ultimate iPhone accessory might be something that looks just like a MacBook. Let's get to the core of this week's Apple news and rumors. In a surprise to us all, Apple might be making a second go of wireless charging pads. To refresh your memory, let's take a little trip down memory lane with a product that never saw the light of day. This was Air Power. It's a mat that you place your iPhone 8 or iPhone 10 down and it just starts to charge. And there's a beautiful new interface. It doesn't stop there. You can place your Series 3 Apple Watch down on it and it starts to charge as well. And you can place your AirPods with the optional new wireless charging case on it and it starts to charge as well. They all charge. That was in 2017 at the 10th anniversary iPhone event. Apple couldn't get it to work as promised in the keynote and eventually, in March 2019, the company pulled the plug completely. The dream of charging multiple devices all at once died with it. But this week, the idea is getting a second life. 9to5Mac reports via our most quoted analyst that Apple is gearing up to release a wireless charging pad alongside the iPhone 9 or iPhone SE 2, iPad Pro and possibly a new MacBook Pro we are expecting in March. Not only that, but the Apple Tags or Air Tags, small Bluetooth trackers to locate lost items, might be joining the lineup. Okay, so at this stage, we have very little detail on what this charging mat might do. From the report, it seems as if it's not going to have the same multi-device charging ability that AirPower had. What we do know is that Apple will have to get this one right. Even if it's just a simple single device Qi charging pad like its competitors offer, Apple will need to make up for the disappointment left after the untimely demise of AirPower, RIP. I really hope Apple can work out a way to charge the Apple Watch on this new pad, just like AirPower promised. Maybe an extra holder on the side to support it. I'm just saying it would be kind of weird to charge AirPods and iPhone, but not Apple Watch, all from the same pad. Watches from competitors like Samsung let you charge from the back of a Galaxy device and from a Qi pad, so let's just see how Apple does this if the rumor is true. And there are several third-party options that are designed to be an air power substitute, so all the more interesting to see Apple dip its toes back into the Qi charging water this week. Also in the report is speculation on high-end headphones. Apple already owns Beats, but it doesn't have an over-ear design that it brands with its own name. Now it's moving into the pro naming convention with the AirPods Pro, maybe over-ear will follow suit. I don't know, this one seems hard to differentiate from Beats, which just released an over-ear noise-cancelling pair called the Solo Pro. And do you really want to have big white over-the-ear headphones? Let me know in the comments. There's always talk about how the Mac might inch closer to the iPad and the iPhone, but this week they might be moving in together. Patently, Apple uncovered a design for an iPhone and iPad accessory that has a housing for the iPhone to sit underneath the keyboard or an iPad to fit in as the screen. The idea is you drop your phone or tablet in the housing, then be able to use features like an external keyboard or get access to a larger display. Look familiar? Well, Razer's Project Linda concept from 2018 came to my mind. Although it never made it to market, Project Linda was a 13-inch laptop powered by the Razer phone that slotted right in underneath the keyboard. What's interesting about the Apple pattern is that this means we could finally get a more fully-fledged accessory that goes above and beyond what the current smart keyboard folio for iPad currently offers. Maybe even use the docked iPhone as a trackpad, who knows? But look back far enough into Apple's history and you'll see that a dockable device is something the company's tried before. The PowerBook Duo from 1992 was a laptop you could attach to a variety of different docks. The Duo came in seven different models and was produced for around five years. Okay, so realistically, what could a MacBook dock really be? A few weeks ago on the show, I talked about the possibility of the 2021 iPhone removing ports altogether. Maybe with a portless iPhone, this new accessory could add back some of those ports so you could back up your phone or even attach wired accessories like headphones. Wild thought. See, there is a solution for everything, as long as you have the money to spend. 
time to take a look at the other fruity headlines you need to know this week. Well, it's official. Apple had a record-setting holiday season boosted by wearables like the AirPods Pro, its services business, and of course, the iPhone 11. Apple's revenue for iPhone was 56 billion US dollars. That was a growth of 8% year over year. Rumor has it that iOS 14 will support all existing devices that can run the current version of iOS 13. So that means maybe even the good old iPhone SE won't be left out in the cold. We'll likely hear more about a new version of iOS at WWDC in a few months. And just because we're talking about iOS, iOS 13 got a major update this week along with, well, every other Apple OS for Apple devices. So go and update. The iPad turned 10 years old this week. Steve Jobs took to the stage on January 27, 2010 to show off what many thought would be called the iSlate. He showed what it was like to check email, browse the web, and look at photos all on the tablet. That's it for this week, but make sure to join me next week for the return of a very special guest. The one and only Vanessa will be back on your screens on the Apple Core.